these organizations. We, I personally believe that there that I believe that there's that there are problems with race, and I would want that to be taught. Like that's one of my worries when it comes to the higher education stuff. The idea that they wouldn't allow that to be taught. And my boys, Samuel and Landon, are both going to go to ISU, and I think I don't want them going to school uh -huh. where their professors aren't allowed to talk about things because you know they've got to follow the line of, of the legislatures in Boise. I don't like. I'm not interested in that. I homeschooled because I didn't want people to be deciding what my kids couldn't couldn't learn. So to have that happen in college feels totally like yeah, extreme. I, I think that the, I mean, for me, the the message is, I, I feel like that the message in the mainstream media and that we're hearing isn't what isn't the message that I'm that is in my heart. I, I'm not trying to censor anything, but I've heard a lot of anecdotal evidence that says college kids get punished if they express their views and they don't align with the liberal agenda. And that's and so when I hear that people think that by taking this seriously on the on the higher education level that I'm in favor of shutting down free speech, I look at it the opposite way because there's an agenda out there that says it's okay for uh, liberal ideas to be taught, but if kids have conservative thoughts and they voice them, then all of a sudden they are punished and they don't graduate and they this and they that, and those are the types of things that I Do you mind if like. I jump in for a second? Sure. I'm actually in college right now. Mm -hmm. Um, and in my personal experience with the students that have conservative ideas, if they bring them up in class, and of course this is just my experience, um, when they bring them up in class that disagrees with maybe a more liberal teacher, the teacher generally asks them to expand on that idea. Um, more often than not, I've seen people with sort of further on either the extreme liberal or extreme right side, um, they don't really have much more to back up their idea rather than the initial statement. And so when the teacher asks them to expand on it, they don't, they can't. And so the teacher will then be able to debunk that idea with something that has proof and facts behind it, something that's provable repeatedly in some sort of either social experiment or even more controlled environment. So um, I don't... Personally, I don't think that liberal ideas are being taught in college. They're merely just have more proofs to back up their ideas than saying, for example, something like women have smaller brains when that's been repeatedly disproven. Uh, that are, despite the fact that our bodies are smaller, therefore our brains are physically smaller and we don't have the same thinking capacity. That's just one idea as an example. I don't mean that all ideas are like that. But, so, I um, don't really think that liberal ideas are being taught in college. They just usually have more. And again, it's not, I'm not opposed to liberal ideas being taught in college, because again, that would be censorship if I was. Yes. Uh, I, I, I feel like there's enough anecdotal evidence and me talking to students that feel like they're being discriminated against if they display, you know, if they wear a MAGA hat on campus or something like that, or, or let people know that they, you know, uh, support conservative ideals. Uh, well, how about I would the people ask who wear like a rainbow flag t-shirt on campus and and get clapped for that. That's the same same I, I think idea that they can't exactly. and this, wear their and this, uh, The legislation that I would favor would protect that kind of discrimination as well. In other words, you can't teach that one race or that one national origin or that one, you know, pick your category is superior to or inferior to another and you can't uh, have that be a basis for punishing or rewarding students, that kind of thing. I want an equal playing field. Rev. Kim, can I ask you a quick question sure. on that note? Mm -hmm. um, in the communications that have been sent to you, it, has it been, from my college experience as well, 
uh, when I learned about theories, I wasn't just taught one theory. I was taught a myriad of theories. Has the communication to you shown that critical race theory is the only theory being taught? Uh, I don't know. I would be concerned because if, if critical race theory is being taught along with other theories, I mean, it's really upholding the values. Yeah, no, I agree. I think I, I'm not, and in, in expressing that I'm not sure where I'm going with these votes, uh, part of that is that I'm no expert, and I think that people that are being loud on both sides of this argument know a lot less about it than they, than they would I mean, represent. I, think the more I don't think anyone yeah. knows exactly what's going on. And, you know, you have your own personal experiences and, you know, what you can study and, and that kind of thing. I guess I would like a personal commitment from our legislators to maybe look at the whole of theories being taught in classes before um, holding funding hostage over one theory. Well, especially because I would really like the whole, I'd like my kids to learn about all of it. I'm not really interested in them only getting a piece. I'm like, this is okay, and oh, we can talk about that right now, but we can't because... We'll, we'll get, I, I could get in trouble with the law, so we can't even discuss that. So here's maybe a book maybe you can go read about it, but we can't talk about it in this class. That feels totally counter to what college should be. Totally counter. So. Yeah, and I, again, I'm, I'm uh, interested and, and have been kind of surprised that, that uh, that the view is, is that we're trying to censor. I feel like it's, we're trying to prevent censorship. Um, you know, I don't know, our, uh, the, the, the coffee shop on Boise State, are you familiar with that yes. situation? Yes. yes, And so that's an example of, in my mind, because of a political view, the student body supported by the college faculty and administration shut somebody down because of their conservative views. And I thought they left on their own. They didn't, they didn't, their yeah. Their contract was revoked. I, I didn't hear that. I heard that they, they broke the contract. Okay. The coffee shop that you're talking about. Well, I guess we can come back here in a year after the lawsuit settles. <laughs> Who's right about that? My understanding is, and I thought it was pretty, you know, pretty widely accepted, is, is that the students demanded that that uh, contractual arrangement with the coffee company be uh, revoked, and it was revoked, and so they, that's what they left. But it, it might have been a situation where the contract expired and wasn't renewed, but uh, anyway, I, I, I believe that it's widely accepted that the dissatisfaction with the coffee company had nothing to do with the service provided or anything else other than that the proprietor was a supporter of law enforcement and the student body supported by the faculty and, and administration uh, did not approve of that. Is that because they had a thin blue line flag? My understanding is that was part of it, yes. Okay, and wasn't that just designated by the Boise Police Department as a hate um, symbol? It was. Our federal Bureau of Investigation has indicated that this messaging has been co-opted from groups that are not interested in coming to the table and having discussions like we're having today. And I think, you know, younger folks, especially college-age folks, um, are, you know, not happy about that kind of division. And so uh, I, I would ask that you keep your mind open to furthering your education on what what is extreme and what is conservative and who is who is messaging and who isn't messaging. I'd, I'd like to, you know, express concern that we've got a lot of um, organizations on the right side who are influencing this conversation, uh, specifically the Idaho Freedom Foundation, which is also a 501c3. And they do a lot of heavy lobbying in here.
and that's a, you know, a, a tough cookie to swallow. Um, we've got teachers who don't come to the state house to speak out because of their professions, and they're getting drowned out with this message of indoctrination that is really hurtful, really hurtful to our rural teachers. And I'd like you to keep that in mind when you're making your decision too, because I feel the morale of teachers is going to go down immensely if we continue to acknowledge and accept the rhetoric of severe indoctrination, which I don't believe to be happening in our schools. Preschool teachers specifically, they're teaching one, two, threes and colors. They're not talking about race. So um, that, those are my two cents. I really appreciate your time. You bet. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for talking with us. And, and I hope that you decide to vote uh, to accept the Trump administration's six million dollars because it came from it comes from the Trump administration that uh, six million dollars for uh, preschool. Thank you all. Yeah, I really appreciate really appreciate your willingness to talk. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm.